Parshas Bahalois Cha Tavshin Pei, and what a joy it is for all of us here to finally, after three months of having to do the shear on the road, we are back at our world headquarters of Bikur Cholam of Lakewood, our place where we've been giving the shear for a number of years every Thursday night, Lel Shishi. But it's not just that we're back at Bikur Cholam at Lakewood because I myself, when I walked into this building, did not recognize with the beautiful renovations, feels like I'm sitting here in some beautiful boutique hotel and uh, Bikur Cholam doesn't waste any time. At the same time that they were actually carrying this town through the medical crisis that everybody um, endured and everybody persevered through in Lakewood, but at the same time they're thinking about the future, they're thinking about the needs of Klal Yisrael, thinking about the needs of the Chaylem and their families, and the beginning results of this huge project that Bikur Cholam has taken on are beginning to show, and it's actually very, very beautiful. And what a privilege it is, I feel it is such a privilege to be back here, to be able to say our shir that Baruch Hashem has been going on for about ten and a half years, and we had to take a break for a couple of months, but we're back and hopefully we should all be well and be able to stay here and to stay and say the shir here at Bikr Cholam on a consistent basis. And the parsha begins with Moshe Rabbeinu telling Aharon Koyen about the great avoida, the great privilege of lighting the menorah. And uh, let me just apologize to those of you who are near Eretz Yisrael, where you're a week ahead of us. So I'm going to give you a little chazorah on your last week's parsha and chutzlar to laning parshas ba'al yischa. In addition to that, I want to mention the fantastic smell of the cholent that is wafting through this room as I say the shir, and uh, we all can't wait to partake in the toyamea delicacies very shortly. And Rashi explains why it is that the parsha of the menorah is is juxtaposed, right? That's a great word and sometimes a little bit of a tongue twister, but why is it that the parsha of the menorah at the beginning of our parsha is spoken about right after the Parsha of the Nesim, which ended last week's Parsha. It's written, we know, all the Nesim, the Karbonus of the Nesim, are written at the end of Parsha's Nosoi. And right away at the beginning of this week's Parsha, Parsha's Ba'alois Cha, we go and we talk about the Menorah, and Rashi explains why. Rashi says, Lefi, Shechol shodaitoi shel Aaron. Aaron had chalishas hadas. Aaron felt a little bad. Shalehoyo im anisim v'chanukas hamizbeach. Aaron Akoyin was from Sheva Levi, and Aaron felt a little bad that he didn't partake in the korbanos of the nisim. Omar loy hakadosh baruch hu. Hakadosh baruch hu said to Aaron Akoyin, Shalecho gedoy lo mi shalohem. What you have. What you have is greater than what anyone else has. What you have is greater than what the Nesim had. Why? You are an Akoyin. You have something greater than the Nesim. Therefore, Rashi says that we have the Parsha Sanesim at the end of last week's Parsha. And then we have the fact that Aaron Akoyin felt bad that he couldn't partake. So what happens, the Torah juxtaposes these two parshiyos to tell us right away that HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Aaron HaKoyen that what you have, Shelecha Gidoila Mishelohem. Aaron HaKoyen thought that the reason Shevet Levi was excluded from the Karbonos Hanasim may be because of him. Aaron HaKoyen felt that maybe for some reason Something that he did caused the fact that Shevet Levi did not partake in the Nesim. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu said to Moshe Rabbeinu, Go tell Aaron Akoyin right now that Aaron, you are destined 
for an even greater thing than the Karbonais Hanasiim. Because the Karbonais are only brought as long as there is a Beis HaMikdash. But the Menorah is forever. That's Rashi's Pshat and why the Parshas Baal Yischa, the Menorah comes right after the Parsha of the Nesim. So the obvious question is asked by many Mepharshim brought down in the Nesim Shalom. I mean, don't we know that when there is no Beis HaMikdash, there's no lighting of the Menorah either. So why do we tell Aaron HaKoyim what you have is greater because the Nesim, they bring Karbonites and Karbonites are over. There's no Karbonites calls man. There is no Beis HaMikdash. But you, Aaron HaKoyim, you have the Menorah. Last I checked, we don't have the lighting of the Menorah every day. We don't have the lighting of the Menorah either. It is actually the same as the Karbonites. So the Medrash Tanchuma actually says, the Medrash Tanchuma says that the Menorah, we need to remember that the Menorah was never destroyed. The Menorah, at, by the Chorban Beis HaMikdash, the Menorah was archived. The Menorah is somewhere. The Menorah was put away. And because the Menorah was never destroyed, it's considered as if the Menorah is around now too. And that's what the Medrash Tanchuma says, but really we still need some explanation over here. We still need to understand really the pshat, that the menorah is different than the carbonate because we're not lighting the menorah today. So what kind of consolation, what kind of pacification was this for Aaron HaKoyim? So Nisiv Shalom brings down the Torah Sa'avos from the Saba Kedisha Mislanim and he explains this whole mahalech al pi derech And he says like this, you need to, to know that there are two ways for a person to be oivet Hashem. This one person, this one type of person, he's oivet Hashem and he serves Hashem totally l'shem shamayim. And he does it totally for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and there is no pleasure, no reward in what he is doing. There's no pleasure for the person at all. As the Torah says in Parshish Bereshis, the Torah says about Hanoich, very interesting play on words in that Pesach, Nesiv Shalom brings down. The Torah says about Hanoich, by his Halech, Hanoich, Es Ho'eloikim, Ve'einenu. So Pasha Pshat in the Pesach is that Hanoich, it was not anymore, that he had left this world. But by Yishalech, Hanoich, Esu, Elikim, Ve'einenu, we say Pshat, that it's, a, it's as if he wasn't in it at all. The way Hanoich served the Kodesh Baruch Hu, by Yishalech, Hanoich, Esu, Elikim, Ve'einenu, it was as if he totally didn't exist. He did everything, Kuloi, L'Shem, Shamayim. And we need to know that when a person does avoida for HaKadosh Baruch Hu in that way, it's on a totally different level. There is tremendous nitzchias when a person does something totally l'shem shamayim. When avoida is done totally for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, nothing can derail that. And then we need to know that there's another level of avoida Hashem. And of course, it's not a bad level. But there's another level, another level of Avodah Hashem. We're mixed into it. There's also some Hana and some satisfaction for the person doing it. And as we all know, most of our Avodah Hashem would probably fall into that category. We usually have some kind of benefit, some kind of Hana, some kind of pleasure, satisfaction, and for the person doing it. And the Ziva Shalom tells us, that we need to know that carbonos, so you see that this is an avoida, this type of an avoida is a very holy avoida too. Carbonos are actually an avoida of the second type because there is a portion in the carbon that goes for the, for the kaihanim or for the person who's bringing the carbon. So you bring a carbon, but the person also has some benefit. You have some pleasure from it. So it is, a carbon is of the second type of Avoid this Hashem. And even by a carbon oil, which is totally burnt on the Mizbeach, by a carbon oil, the Kayhanim actually get the skins of the animal. So we see in such a case, the Kayhanim actually get some kind of benefit. 
Tzadzi Vishal tells us something very beautiful. And he says, this is what was being told to Aaron HaKoyin. Aaron HaKoyin was told, What you have, Aaron HaKoyin, in a way, it is greater than what the Nesim have. He's telling something, and that's something we just mentioned before, about the first type of Avoidus Hashem. What you do, Aaron HaKoyin, that has a Nitzchis. You know why? Because you have an avoida, the avoida of the menorah. You have an avoida that has no hana for the person doing the avoida. That type of avoida, as we mentioned, has tremendous nitzchias. The schos of that kind of avoida lasts forever. Karbonois, what the Nesim did, they do not have that kind of nitzchias. The karbonis of the Nesim had, of course, a tremendous uplifting experience and a tremendous schus, but it's not an everlasting schus. It is a type of avoidus Hashem that the person doing it gets some avoidus. The Pasuk tells us, Vayas kein aroin. When Aaron got the commandment for the menorah, Vayas kein aroin, what did he do? Kasher tzivo Hashem es Moshe. Aaron did it exactly what Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, the commandment of the menorah, but Aaron did it exactly what was commanded with nothing for himself, nothing personal, no personal gain or any changes. And with this, we can also actually explain the Ramban, the very famous Ramban. The Ramban tells us that when we say, it's going by near Hanukkah. The Ramban says, that when Aaron HaKoyim was told that what you have will be everlasting and it's going to last more, it's referring to Ner Hanukkah. So with our Pshat, we can understand Ner Hanukkah is also a type of mitzvah that you don't have Hanukkah from. You're not even allowed to have Hanukkah from the Ner Hanukkah. It is done just for the mitzvah. A mitzvah that is totally L'Shem Shemayim. We have no Hanukkah and you're not allowed to get Hanukkah from the Menorah. Therefore, Ner is Hanukkah. By Ner is Hanukkah we say that they are Kodesh and Ein Lonu Rishus L'Shtamesh Bohem. We have no Rishus to ever use the Ner Hanukkah because if you use the Ner Hanukkah you're taking away from that tremendous Nitzchias, from that tremendous Chus that you have from something that is done totally L'shem Shemayim. Ner Hanukkah has that exalted level of the Or HaMenorah, which is totally L'shem Shemayim. And the lesson really here is, is that both types of Avodah Hashem are fantastic. I mean, any person, any Avodah Hashem you do is, is a tremendous level. It's a tremendous thing. It's a tremendous schus for a person. But you have to, you, we should always try to keep in mind that if we're ever able to do something totally L'shem Shamayim, like the people here in this building, people here at Bikr Cholem, not only um, do they do things, but they do Avodah HaKodesh without ever wanting anything in return. You see, there are people that are so dedicated, and if we ever have a chance, we ever have a chance to do something L'shem Shamayim, we should grab that opportunity because you understand that when you do something L'shem Shemayim and you take yourself out of the equation as Aaron HaKoyim did by lighting the menorah, the Torah and HaChachamim tell us that it's a schus that can resonate for yourself forever and for generations to come. It's a tremendous, tremendous schus that not many of us have the opportunity to grab onto. So if we see that we could do something L'shem Shemayim, you don't ask for anything to be paid in return, you don't ask for a favor in return, you're able to help somebody out, and you know that person will never be able to do anything for you, will never be able to pay you back, never be able to do something for you, grab that opportunity, because you have the opportunity to grab onto a schus that can benefit you and do something for you forever. The real benefit, a nitzchiyah's benefit. And that is the lesson of the menorah. The lesson we learn from Aaron HaKoyim. The lesson we learn about doing things L'shem Shemayim.